Hi guys, thanks for tuning in. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe by hitting the button below. Enjoy. Hello and welcome to Katie Picks. Today we are talking love food, hate waste because I love the food and I hate the waste. Because not only is it amazing for the environment, if we can reduce all that excess packaging and lobbing our wasted food into the garbage, and it's good for your pocket too, because who wants to buy something that they're never going to use? So today, I'm going to combat those two main suspects in the fight against food waste, potatoes and bread. So here's some mind-blowing facts for you. Every day in the UK, the equivalent approximately of 5.8 million whole potatoes are thrown away. Right? And... 24 million slices of bread a day in the UK. That's just the UK. On the plus side, a bit of positive news for you, that is actually a third less than back in 2007. So we are making progress. And here's a little recipe for you today to help in the fight against food waste. We are making potato bread. So rather than going and getting that loaf of bread that's going to sit and go mouldy in your bread bin, we're going to use up those potatoes that sat in the bottom of your pantry going equally as mouldy and turn it into something beautiful that you can use in the morning, lunch, dinner, wherever. Potato bread people, ever heard of it? No? Well, be prepared to be blown away. So, first things first, we are going to put 300 grams of potatoes on the boil for about 15 to 20 minutes until they're lovely and soft. Once they have cooked through, we are going to pour them over a bowl with a colander to catch the starchy water. We're going to use this starchy water to help activate our yeast. We are now going to pop those spuds back in the pan, back onto the heat for about two or three minutes to basically dry out your potatoes. And you want to measure out 75 mils of your starchy water. So let's pop 75 mils of that into a jug. You may not have followed the recipe in that. Please try not to overcook your potatoes, otherwise you're going to have to leave them on the heat for a bit longer to get rid of that moisture. When they're falling apart, they've got more moisture in. Mine are falling apart. I've got a lot of moisture in. So I, bit of evaporation. Never hurt any potato. So you want your 75 mils to come down to lukewarm temperature. So cool enough that you can dip your finger in. Do not do that right now. It's gonna be really hot, so avoid that. We just wanna leave it to cool for a bit. And to that, we're going to add in a teaspoon of fast acting dried yeast and a teaspoon of sugar. Add those in, stir them up, leave it for about 10 minutes, during which time it should start to foam. And that's when you know that the yeast is activated and we're ready to go on with the next step. Next up, we're gonna mash our potatoes. So we're going to add Oh, one tablespoon into our potatoes and we're gonna mash them up. Lovely. So the next step is to combine your mashed potato with your yeast mixture. You want to make sure you've left your yeast for about 10 minutes until it has started to activate. You're then going to add that into your mashed potatoes with one teaspoon of salt. Give that a good stir. And then we've got 300 grams of strong white bread flour. You're gonna find that the texture's gonna go really, really firm. Add it in until you can't really stir it anymore. And then you're gonna tip it out onto a floured surface and give it a really good knead with your hands until it's lovely, smooth, pliable, and together. So when you're kneading, you want to use the palm of your hand, just using that base and really pushing it into the dough. Drag it back with your fingers and use your other hand as a guide to keep it all together. So there we have lovely, smooth bread dough. Now, this is going to go into an oiled bowl. You want a big bowl for this. Oil up the bowl. This will stop our mixture from sticking. You're going to pop your dough into the middle and you're going to leave it for at least an hour, but you basically want it to rise and almost double in size. So cover it with a bit of greased cling film, put it somewhere nice and warm, and we'll come back to this shortly. So our dough has had some time to rise. In fact, it's had just over an hour and it has well and truly doubled in size. Look at it. Step two of three now we're on. So this is going to be knocked back 
transferred to a baking tray that we will eventually cook it in, but it's also gonna need another 30 minutes to rise. So first things first, let's knock it back. Now we do that by taking your knuckles and you're going to lightly punch into the center of the dough. When you're knocking back, you are pushing the air out of the dough. So we're gonna push in with our knuckles and then we're just gonna drag from the side, just making sure that remaining air has been knocked out before we put it in for our second rise. Okay, so I'm now going to pop it onto a lightly floured surface. We don't want to add too much flour, too much more flour to it at this point. And then I'm just going to prod it out so it's a bit flatter. Again, just knocking out a bit of that extra air. And then I'm going to bring it back into the middle in a lovely rustic oh, top knot. So what you've got here is a very springy, plump little ball. Now this is going to go onto a baking tray that I'm going to oil and I'm going to flour to avoid it sticking. Now you do have the option at this point to also use a bit of like wholemeal flour that will add an extra crunch to the outside of your bread. You can also top your bread with poppy seeds, sesame seeds, even like onion granules if you wanted to add a bit of extra flavour. I'm going to keep it in its most beautiful pure form however straight in to our tin. Now, as I say, this is going to have another 30 minutes back in the warm space you had it in before just to do a second rise. This is going to make sure that we've got beautiful, airy, light, spongy bread. And then it's going to go into the oven at 220 degrees centigrade, preheated for about 30 to 35 minutes. Then you will have the most delicious loaf. Potato bread, people. Best bread Ever. So if you love food but hate waste, this is the one to try. Stop buying those loaves and forgetting about it. Put those potatoes in your store cupboard to good use because look at this. Look at it. Can we just take a moment? Look how squishy and fluffy that is. You've got beautiful air pockets. The idea that mashed potato is inside this, you wouldn't have a clue. The texture is spongy. It's light. It smells incredible. It smells like a bakery in here. Now what's left to do is for me to... That's the thing as well, it's got such a good crunch on the outside and everything's super soft. You know what, I'm going to go naked, naked first. I'm never buying bread again. And that's amazing. That is amazing. Please, please give this a go. And for more creative ways of reducing your food waste, please check out lovefoodhatewaste.com. All of the details are in the description box below. Guys, if you like this, why not subscribe? And guys, if you've got a recipe for using up your leftover food, please make sure you drop it into the comments box. I want to get this conversation going because it's so important. But until next time, mm, amazing. Bye. That's incredible. That's honestly the best bread I've ever made.